and welcome back to my channel. Today we are looking at global atmospheric circulation and the weather. So to start with, the global circulation system. The global circulation system involving interconnected cells of air, controls temperatures, rainfall, distribution, prevailing winds and creates distinctive climate zones across the globe. Our atmosphere, winds, ocean currents and principally the sun's energy, solar insulation, all work together to keep our planet inhabitable. The Hadley cells, these are the largest atmospheric circulation cells, cause heavy rain around the inter intertropical conversion zone, the ITCZ. This is the area around the equator. And arid deserts, 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south of the equator. So at the equator, the Hadley cell rises because it's hot, so the air rises, it then gets to the atmosphere layer, diverts, so some of it goes north, some of it goes south, and then falls at about 30 degrees north and south. So these are areas of high pressure, the air is falling, so there's like pressure falling on top of, if you were to think of it as like, if something's coming down on you, there's more pressure. Um, so it then falls 30 degrees north, 30 degrees south, and that's why we get deserts, so that's why we've got the Sahara Desert, for example. The sun's rays are most strong at the equator, that should not be a surprise to you. Over the tropical latitudes, so at around your 30, 40 degrees, um, insulation is concentrated over small parts and at a tro of smaller surface areas. Over the tropical latitudes, insulation also has a direct path through the atmosphere, so less heat is lost than at the poles. And then at the poles, the, there's a different angle of sun. So the sun is lower, so there is not as strong heat coming to the poles, which is why the Arctic and the Antarctic are the coldest places on Earth, and the equator is the hottest. So how does the global atmospheric circulation system cause extreme in weather conditions? So the winds. The winds is the movement of air, of air from high pressure areas to low pressure areas through what we talk about in physics as diffusion. The greater the difference in pressure, the stronger the wind. So wind types include strong jet streams in areas of high pressure to low pressure, trade winds, which blow along the surface from high pressure belts to low pressure belts, prevailing winds, so in the UK, the prevailing wind is coming from the southwest, and prevailing winds are just the most common direction that winds are coming from. Cabatic winds are when heavy air is moving downhill, like physically down relief hills, and then tropical storms and tornadoes. These are very strong rotating winds. So if you were to look at a map, you would see the eye of a tornado. There's not much wind going on here, but the strongest wind is round the outside of the eye of the tornado. It can get up to five, 600 miles an hour, for example. Temperature patterns in the global atmospheric circulation system. Solar insulation heats the Earth's surface and is strongest where it is focused on the tropical latitudes. But other factors also affect temperature in different parts of the world. The other factors affecting temperature. Firstly, the albedo effect. High albedo surfaces reflect the sun's rays, for example, like white polar ice and snow. And then low albedo surfaces absorb the sun's rays, for example, dark green tropical rainforests. So if you've ever been outside in the summer and you've been wearing black, your clothes will generally get warmer, they will absorb the sun's energy, whereas if you're wearing white, it reflects it. So in Greece, for example, a lot of the houses are white and you'll see it all over Instagram, white and blue. That is so that it reflects the sun's energy and the houses don't retain the heat, so it's not as hot. Whereas in the UK, our houses are generally a brick, which is a little bit darker, and so it absorbs the sun's energy and retains the heat just by the colour. The sea and the land also affects temperature. Seawater is slower, he slower to heat up than the land, but it stays warmer for longer. Altitude also affects temperature. So the temperature drops by 6.5 degrees centigrade for every thousand meters higher you go, because the air pressure is lower. So if you were to go 100 meters higher, it would be 0 0.6 degrees colder. Again, another 100 meters, 0 0.6 degrees colder. And over a thousand meters, so a kilometer, 6.5 degrees in difference. So it'd be warmer towards the 
like sea level and then colder as you go higher which is when you're climbing Mount Everest it gets colder as you go higher cloud cover also affects the sun's rays and that also affects temperature so if there is more cloud there is less sunlight there is less warmth and then winds and ocean currents redistribute this heat around the planet the hottest place on earth is the Lut desert in iran there are no clouds insulation is intense the dark lava there absorbs the sun's rays whereas in contrast the coldest place in the world is antarctica insulation is spread ice and snow reflect the sun's rays back up and then how does precipitation affect the global atmospheric circulation and weather precipitation is moisture falling from the atmosphere as rain hail sleet or snow the global circulation system plays an important role in determining precipitation patterns because areas of low pressure have rising air so high precipitation whereas areas of high pressure with descending air have low precipitation levels at global, regional or local scale, all precipitation is caused by warm air containing water vapour rising, cooling and condensing into clouds. Precipitation could be convectional, which is intense isolation around the air and above it, for example at the ITCZ, the band around the equator. It can be frontal, which we get a lot of in the UK. So a warm air mass meets a cold air mass and rises above it. For example, the UK, so when warm air, warm air mass and cold air mass meet, the war, warm air mass is forced to rise above, and this is frontal, like this is where we get frontal rainfall from. And then relief rainfall, so this is due to the relief of the land, the height of the land. So when warm air is forced over the mountains, it causes he heavy precipitation, and then it descends on what we call the leeward side, the other side of the mountain to create what we call a rain shadow. So that is the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. All my revision guides are down in the description. Go and pick them up. There are retrieval questions there, there are exam questions. If you want to, you can do the access all areas for your exam board to get all of the revision guides that you need, all for one price. It's a Google Classroom, so it's all there for you. There are other students there that you can meet, that you can chat about exam questions. You can submit things to me. I will mark them for you and hopefully help you to succeed the best that you can in your exams. So do subscribe down below and I will see you whenever I upload my next one. See you later.